Well, my faithful subscribers, I hope you're still with me. I know you're accustomed to seeing a video every, just about every day, except usually Mondays or Sundays. But, huh, I just, uh, well, quite honestly, I got no excuses. Just needed to crash for a bit. So I laid off one of the things, or a couple of things that are, that were keeping me busy, and yesterday had some pizza and watched a movie and yada 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 but don't get me wrong now I've been busy as usual you wouldn't expect any less but I got me a new pickup so all this one cost me was a motor jar or a motor and a little bit of labor it's a 1989 get the gate closed here It's a 1989 Ford F-150, has a 302, 5 speed. The motor is a has 20,000 miles on it. And it is a genuine motorcraft replacement, so it's a crate motor. See, it's in pretty decent shape. Just a little bit of wear and tear, I gotta fix that trim piece, but other than that, you know, it's XLT Lariat. Runs like a watch. Just smooth as silk. And so I put my CD player in it, and I'll put the subs behind the seat eventually here. And got to get some dual exhaust on it so it sounds good. But it's in pretty awful decent shape, really. It drives nice, drives beautiful. But there is, as usual, one small downside. The guy lost a wheel going down the highway. And uh, had a wheel bearing go out and the axle and wheel shot out, and yada yada. Anyways, so lost a wheel, mashed up the box. So this pickup that was otherwise in pretty awful good shape, um, just has this big ding in the box. But I might build a flatbed for it. I might just drive it the way it is. Just hard saying. You just never know with these things. Other than that though, mechanically it's sound. I had an axle laying around from an 88 Ford that uh, with 355 gears and a posi. And so I just slapped that underneath there and got her done. Now that 60 Chevy truck that I was talking about the other day. That one, Matt got running. And uh, really, I <laughs> didn't take hardly anything. All he had to do was put a set of plugs in it and uh, clean out the gas tank and get gas up to the carburetor and it popped right off. So Matt will be using that to uh, haul scrap iron out of here. Park the Sebring for a while. You all know how much I hate that car, and uh, haven't driven the the Honda here in a couple days, so let's see, let's see if it'll fire up, by God. We'll head up to the shop. I'll show you what else I got done. Busy, busy, busy. There it goes. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. What the hell? Why does it always squeak like that? Oh, well, that's right. There's still no brakes. Woo, Nelly. And we're off. We had, believe it or not, it was 20 degrees and snowing yesterday. That's the other reason I haven't gotten any movies done is the weather has been just crazy. So yesterday it was 20 degrees and snowing and today it is uh, about 70 and <laughs> beautiful. The weather's freaking beautiful. I just don't understand it. Ah, there, oh, no brakes, I forget. Reverse.
There we are. There's the new motor for the Ranger, the four liter. Complete with the full wiring harness and the uh, bezel that I needed for the headlight and the radiator. Basically all of the stuff that I need to put that four liter into my Ranger. So, you may ask, where is the Explorer? Well, we haven't trashed it, trashed it just yet. Not bad, anyways. Nothing more than you've already seen. Whoop -de -doo. And there it is. Whoa, 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 brakes, brakes. Yeah, that works. Ha, yeah, we like it. There we go. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and the worst for wear. Yeah, didn't hurt nothing. So, this is what's left of the Explorer. Matt and Charlie got all the windows out and uh, basically gutted it. There isn't any wires left in it or nothing. And uh, it must have gotten a little abusive with the windshield. It kind of looks that way anyways. Oh well, doesn't really matter. And the wiper motor's out. Yeah, it looks like they did a pretty thorough job of stripping it anyways. We like it. So, they left a screwdriver and a wrench here, too. And those dipshits. Always leaving my tools laying around. Why do they gotta do that? I don't know why they can't just put tools away. Always leaving them laying about. We got a part in here, the windshield wiper motor. So if there's any of you guys that want some parts off this thing, what's left of it anyways, we got a brake booster, master cylinder, steering box, and sector, and some different things. Just let me know. So, what else have we gotten done? I'm trying to think. Well, I went and looked at that other pickup, that other Ranger that, uh, that I had to work on, and, uh, Turns out there's nothing wrong with it after all, other than the transmission's mucked up, but whatever. He didn't want me to work on that at the time. He was worried about the ticking noise that he thought it was making, but it was actually just an exhaust leak. So we got that squared away. Might uh, be doing a motor job on an 8560 John Deere or 8650. One of the two. I gotta go look at it when they get it back to the shop. It's locked up and they want me to re-sleeve it and rework it. Oh, what else? Oh, the Alice Chalmers. Still is not unseized. Um, been working on it, but I got to get some more WD-40 tomorrow. And I've had some suggestions for some really good stuff to try. And so we'll see what happens with that. Before I pull that in the shop, though, I've got to do a front-end job on the uh, Power Stroke. And I've got to do front-end work on Oscar the Work Pickup. And I've got to do a clutch in the Nissan... And the motor in the Ranger, and I got to do a motor swap in my Bronco. Well, now it's Roman's Bronco. But anyways, so I got plenty to do. We'll keep you all up to date. 